Hello grade 11, welcome. In our previous video, you learned that light elements hydrogen, helium, lithium, and beryllium are the only elements formed in the early universe through the process called Big Bang nucleosynthesis. The continuous expansion of the universe decreases the temperature which is needed for collisions of particles to occur. Naging sobrang lamig na ng universe kaya hindi na nakagagawa ng bagong elements ang mga protons and neutrons. Kailangan nila ng init, ng pagmamahal mo, chan. The question now is, how do the heavier elements form after the Big Bang? Saan galing ang mga elements katulad ng calcium sa buto mo, potassium na nasa saging, at sodium and chlorine na nasa asin? Saan kumuha ng init para mabuo ang mga elements na yan? Today, you will learn how the elements heavier than beryllium are formed during the evolution of the star through the process called stellar nucleosynthesis. At the end of this video, you should be able to explain how the heavier elements are formed during star formation and evolution. Kick. Hey. Formation of heavier elements started million years after the explosion. That is the time when a vast cloud of gas and dust called nebula start to collapse due to the action of gravity. In a geologic blink of an eye, a hundred thousand years, gravity pulled the clouds together creating a protostar. In the center, where molecules crush together, pressure and temperature rise up incredibly, the newborn star becomes hot enough for nuclear fusion to occur, starting the process called stellar nucleosynthesis. Stellar nucleosynthesis is the process by which elements are formed within the stars as a result of nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is the process by which multiple nuclei joined together to form a heavier nucleus. Since the stars are composed primarily of hydrogen, the first fusion process occurs in the hydrogen core of the stars, such as the Sun, with a temperature of less than 15 million Kelvin. In the process known as the main branch proton-proton chain, deuteron, an isotope of hydrogen, if you can recall in our previous video, forms helium-3 when fused with a proton. This is known as the deuterium burning. This immediately consumes all the deuterium produced in the early universe. Then, helium-4 forms from helium-3 fusion. As you can see, when helium-3 combines with another helium-3, the reaction produces a helium-4 and two protons. This nuclear fusion releases tremendous amount of light, heat, and radioactive energy represented by this symbol, the gamma ray. Ang init na nakakuha natin sa araw ay resulta ng nuclear fusion ng hydrogen para maging isang helium. Nasa ganitong state ang araw natin ngayon. Since helium is heavier than hydrogen, and as more and more hydrogen is burned into helium, the core of a star becomes comprised of helium as hydrogen is depleted. The star now have a very dense helium core and a hydrogen shell. Due to this process, the temperature and density of the core of the star increases up to 100 million Kelvin. The star's thermal pressure causes it to push out the gas and the star balloons into a red giant. Because of the increase in temperature, several nuclear fusion processes will occur in red giant aside from hydrogen fusion. The first is the triple alpha process. Alpha particles refer to helium-4. This reaction involves the fusion of three helium-4 atoms in the following steps. Two helium-4 atoms will react to form beryllium-8 and then the beryllium-8 produced reacts with another helium-4 to form carbon-12. The second one is the carbon fusion cycle or the CNO cycle, a process where carbon-12 is used as a catalyst 
that facilitate the production of helium once it was already present from the alpha processes. CNO cycle is the process that involves repeated proton capture and beta plus decay. To give you a short review para mas mabilis niyong maintindihan ang susunod na chemical reactions, this nuclear symbol, for example, helium, HE represents the symbol of the element. This number, sa taas, represents the number of proton and neutron in the nucleus. We call it the mass number. And this one represents the number of proton, and we call this one the atomic number. Remember that each element has a unique number of proton, and the periodic table was arranged according to increasing number of protons. Kaya nga mabilis niyo makikita kung alin ang mga heavier elements. Kasi yung mga light elements, nandun siya sa taas. Yung mga heavier elements, nandito siya pababa. Now, going back, let's continue. Alpha fusion processes continue in the core via the alpha ladder. More and more alpha particles are fused to create heavier elements all the way to iron, making the core and the star itself more acid. isa say natin, the carbon-12 produced in the triple alpha process will also react with helium producing the element oxygen. Now looking at the reaction, the mass number of carbon-12 plus helium-4 is 16. And now the atomic number of, or the number of proton is 6 plus 2 is 8. To determine what element is formed in the reaction, we simply consider the atomic number. Therefore, the number 8 in the periodic table is oxygen. That's simple. The alpha ladder continues. Oxygen reacts with helium. Atomic number 8 plus 2 is 10. What element is number 10 in the periodic table? Correct. Neon. How about this one? Yes, magnesium. Alpha fusion continue in the core via the alpha ladder. The alpha particles create heavier elements all the way to iron, making the core of the star. Ang mga nabuong elements sa star ay hanggang iron lang. Kung ganun, paano nabuo ang mga elements heavier than iron like copper, yung mga nasa wire, Gold, ang gold necklace mo, tin, and silver. The star keep growing as it accumulates mass up to the point where the star will eventually be unable to generate energy to push against gravity due to the formation of heavier elements, thus causing it to collapse on itself. It then undergoes planetary nebula for a medium-sized star like our sun or supernova for massive stars. Now, supernova releases tremendous amount of energy, enough to synthesize elements heavier than iron. Therefore, hindi na sila nabuo sa loob ng star. They were formed during supernova explosion, yung mga elements heavier than iron. This is done through the R process that involves rapid capture of neutrons by the atom. Other heavy elements are also synthesized through S process involving slow neutron capture in red giants. After the explosion, the stars like ours will become a white dwarf and later on becomes a black dwarf like a stone lost in space. For massive stars naman, either they become a neutron star or a black hole. And that's all for today. Shoutout sa mga co-teachers kong very supportive, lalong-lalo na kay Ma'am Ella na nagpahiram ng kanyang classroom, kay Ma'am MJ na nagahawak ng prompter ngayon, at kay Sir Bernard na in love na in love kay Bia ngayon na siya ang aking cameraman. Please subscribe to his channel, Bernard Gomez, for instructional videos and mathematics. Thank you all for watching! Tan-tan-tan-tan!